I was in custody three times for criminal fraud. I don't smoke, I don't drink, but I love taking shortcuts. I found a way to earn 10 years worth of wages in just a month. I was only 12 and I started to learn about drugs. I started to consume, of course, I started to sell. Everything I did, it had drugs in it. So I grew up without much guidance because my mom passed away when I was about 12, 13 years old. And then from that moment onwards, all I had in my life were drugs. Spending 22 hours a day confined in a tiny prison cell, my mind would just wonder, my family doesn't want me, my kids will hate me, there's no one I can turn to, or why haven't I even died? What I was thinking when I'm released, how am I going to make it bigger and how am I going to evade the law? That's all that was in my mind. So I've been reading books all my time in prison, but it was during my seventh imprisonment that I started asking myself, what if I die right there? You know, what would I have achieved in my life so far? I mean, I had nothing. opportunity to work in a call centre in the prison was probably the most defining moment of my life. And the moment you get into the call, right, you forget that you are even in prison. I used to call 100 customers a day. 80% of them will reject you. But doing this for months and years taught me never to give up. I began to dream with my eyes open. I said, hey, maybe one day I can even set up a small call centre and help the likes of me and give them an opportunity to work in that environment and bring the best out of them. When I look back, what is there for me to be proud of? And then when I had this thought, I just knew that I had to do something. So but then when I decided to turn my life around, I approached the prison staff and told them that I wanted to work in Agape. Hey. How are you, man? Yeah. Good to see you, man. <laughs> huh? Never seen. <laughs> Anil is a, is a mentor figure for me. I mean... Am I? Yeah. Okay, that's nice to know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I uh, always look up to Anil. One more for him. One more coming. Yeah. When we were running the men's call centre in the prison, right? Um, Rizwan was a, a very interesting person. He was different from the rest because not only he had potential, he was teachable. Anil was always there. I mean, you know, he will come in every day into the call centre and he remembers all our names and he will come. Hey, Rizwan, how is it going today? Everything okay? Then you go to the next person. I was actually amazed, you know, by looking at him. It, it is not easy to run a call centre in prison. How I wish, you know, I can like <laughs> follow his footsteps is very hard. Lah. It's a different level of determination. Nothing will face him, nothing can stop him. So Anil, uh, how is the training academy going? One of the most significant moments of Agape's journey is the partnership with Barclays Bank. Not only did they come in supporting us in funding, they came with friendship. And Barclays came about, gave their time, and sat down with each individual to prepare a resume so that when these candidates right, uh, were to go and send their resumes out to potential employers, at least it's a starting point. The resume writing skills and job interview skills uh, were taught to me by volunteers from Barclays and I was quite happy because I was able to share this with my friends. It was quite surreal for me. Me helping people like me, it never crossed my mind before. I helped create, I think, 10 to 15 resumes like they were all crowding around me. And I was so busy too. Yeah, I was, I was very happy, you know. I've been volunteering with them on a regular basis. I was really inspired by the work that they have been doing. I could see the beneficiary actually gaining confidence and also direction. So because of all these opportunities in, that I got in Agape, all this gave me that confidence I needed to move on and to where I am now, working for a tech company. 
As today, when I reflect back, I didn't really have uh, mentors or someone who's able to get the best out of me. And today, because I know that that is how important that is, and that's the kind of environment that I'm building in, in the work that I do, so that no one is left unattended.